hope you're doing good today. I am excited about our guest. We have someone special we're talking to today. Uh, super excited to talk with Kelsey L. Burton about public health. This is an exciting day. I'm She's already in the room. Hey, Kelsey. I'm going to introduce her and then we'll add her to the conversation. So Kelsey L. Burton is a PhD candidate at the University of Louisville School of Public Health and Information uh, Sciences. As a researcher, she has been dedicated to addressing health disparities, impacting marginalized communities, and majority of her research has been focused on awareness and addressing HIV and AIDS disparities among African Americans in the United States and people of color in Canada as well. Kelsey has done a lot of research um, in, in the community and really connecting uh, theory to everyday experiences. So we're really excited to talk to her about her mission as a researcher for advocating for caregivers as well as helping people become more aware about their health and the ways that they can be proactive about it. So I'm going to welcome Kelsey into the room as we talk about improving our own health and public health in general. She's coming in. Hi, Kelsey. Hi. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? Me. I'm doing good. How are you? Good. It's good to see you. I, I think it's been over a year since I've seen your face. I know. You look so cute. Uh, <laughs> I love the top bun. Yes, for yeah. the head wrap. Yeah. Yes, I've been working all day, so, you know. But, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I was at a conference, and I just hopped on. I was like, oh, I got to go. It's good. There's an international leadership conference going on right now. So oh. I had to hop on so I could join you in this health check. So every month, um, I usually come on McKissick Health and Wellness and just talk to people about where they are in their health journey and how we can improve our practices and our mindset around our health. And I thought it would be cool to start bringing people on to have conversations with other people and mostly professionals in the field, but as well as just people who are on their own health journey and talk about the importance of it. So we know you have a background in public health. You're right now wrapping up your PhD in public health. Girl, we are working on a PhD. We are in an analysis phase of a dissertation, and that's where we're going to keep it. I don't want like to get people like a definitive date when I'm finished because I don't know. <laughs> but it's I'm in the journey. It's like our health, of, right? Huh? I said it's like our health. It's a journey. It's a journey. It's a journey. It is definitely a journey. For sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So today... As we talk about public health, public health is a term we hear, but we don't necessarily understand. So what is public health? Help us wrap our minds around what it means and what it kind of targets. Okay, so public health, so usually when people think about public health, they automatically think of like medicine, health. We're not medicine. The medical field, like physicians and doctors, they focus on diagnosis and treatment. Like you go to the doctor to get a diagnosis and to get treatment. Public health, we are focused on, like, community and population. So we study, like, health disparities. So pretty much, for example, like, why does this health disparity um, exist? Why is it impacting this community more than it is other communities? Um, and we try to create interventions to help, you know, address those health outcomes. Um, and interventions can be individual level through, like, education, but it can also be, like, community and organization level by encouraging, like, communities and organizations to get, like, incentives for people to do healthy behaviors. Or it can be, like, policy level. Like, I think um, seatbelts, for example, is a public health policy because it's a law that enforces people to use seatbelts so they don't, you know, get injured badly or die in a car accident. So when you hear public health, we're focusing on, like, population. So, like, the, the biggest public health issue right now is the coronavirus. So there are public health professionals who are out there trying to educate communities on what the coronavirus is. There's also people who are in public health communications who are in charge of, like, messaging, like, trying to educate people and get good messaging out about, like, vaccines and what they need to know about getting a COVID test. And then there are people out there who are working on policy, right, who are working on policy to say, or who probably are talking about policy about like, you know, should we make it mandatory, should we not make it mandatory, and things like that. So when you hear public health, think of people who are talking about a population um, and health issues are impacting populations and communities. And we, uh, I think epidemiologists are people who like study trends, like so they study the trends, so, um, and things like that. I come from um, 
specifically, I fo focus on HIV and AIDS and sexual health. So I'm always looking at um, HIV AIDS prevention and education and how to reduce stigma and get people, you know, more educated on things like PrEP. But public health has also taken on this uh, arena of racism, is looking at racism as a public health issue. And so yeah. now who are looking at public health uh, issues like me, like I'm looking at HIV, we're looking at, you know, why does HIV disproportionately impact African Americans? This is a disease that's been around since the 80s. And over the years, it has gotten better. We've gotten better with innovation as far as like uh, prevention and things like that. But for some reason, African Americans are still disproportionately impacted by HIV than other racial groups. So most of the research that I do now is about um, trying to understand why those gaps exist. Like today, I was helping out with a project that I'm doing that's focused on people who are black, uh, 18 to 24 experience incarceration and like mm. you know what can we do better as far as getting testing for that population um, and my dissertation is focused on like kind of like faith-based approaches to HIV AIDS um, so I'm talking to oh. pastors about their perspective on HIV and AIDS because surprisingly black churches are very good at HIV prevention efforts and things like that so I hope that explains everything Was that clear? it does it does I think it gives people an understanding that there are various dimensions of it right a lot of entry points that people can enter into the conversation I'm more on the programming end and yes. how institutions and community organizations can implement programming into the way they work but that that's a good point I'm glad that you ended with leadership because that's one of our focuses towards the end but in regards to like how you mentioned it's looking at communities how can people feel in control because policy kind of can make you feel like you've lost a sense of control in that same uh, part of your conversation about seat belts right there are still people to this day who fuss about wearing seat belts and it <laughs> makes like no sense to me at all <laughs> But people feel like they should have some level of control in how they behave without being fully aware of the gravity of their choices, right? So how can you encourage people to like feel in control of their health and their choices, but also be aware like these policies are created for a reason. They aren't like haphazardly put together. They're intentionally trying to benefit the people that they're communicating to. And hi, everybody who's joining. We're just talking about an intro to public health. Kelsey gave us a great introduction. You have public health one on one, honey. Uh, <laughs> down pat for you guys yes. to understand. So be sure to watch the replay to catch the beginning. But now we're just transitioning into talking about um, how people can feel in control of their health while also being mindful of these policies that are being created to benefit our health. So the thing is, is that we all have within ourselves the ability to make decisions for ourselves to impact our health. Um, but I also, coming from a public health perspective, understand that sometimes we live in social situations and there are like social factors, what we call public health social determinants, that impact mm -hmm. our decisions, right? So I often use the example of how there are doctors who often try to tell patients who are suffering with diabetes, oh, you can be in control of your diabetes if you eat right exercise. And that seems very simple, right? It seems simple. All you have to do is eat right and exercise. But that doesn't mean much to a person who is living in a community where they live in food deserts or they live in a community where they, um, you know, it's not really safe to walk around. They don't have parks, safe parks and things for them to walk around. Or if you're someone who, you know, let's be honest, you know, our president last night talked about raising a minimum wage, but there are people who have to work multiple jobs to make ends meet. So where do you find time to sit down and, you know, go and work out? And right. that. Like, and when you do have time, are you really going to go work out? Like, you know what I mean? So the thing is, is, like, we do have control. We do have an ability to take control, to change our health. But we, there are social factors that impact other people. And my thing is, is if you are someone, um, not to be hard on yourself when making, like, if you are someone, you know, that, you know, I have to work a lot of jobs. I mean, I think about myself, you know. I have to go to school, read all day. Sometimes I don't make the best eating decisions. The thing is not to beat yourself up. You know, mm -hmm. you can't control sometimes what your social situation is or what's right. going on. So don't beat yourself up. Be kind to yourself. Love yourself. Um, but make small steps that you can make um, to make good, healthy decisions. So, you know, for me, it's like, well, if I'm going to eat Chick-fil-A today, I'm going to not get fries. I'm going to get sure. a you know? <laughs> Are you preaching? Hold on now. <laughs> You know, if, if I'm going, you 
know, last night Chelsea and I, we got some chicken. And, you know, instead of getting fries, I got green beans and some kale. So, you know, it's things like that. Like, you can make small decisions like that. But I think from a public health standpoint, we have to, when we talk to people about taking control of their health, we want to also, for those of us who are in the social positions, I think we have to also acknowledge that we need to advocate more for equitable grocery shopping within our communities. You know, I live in Louisville, Kentucky, and there's areas um, within the city that are food deserts, where they don't have adequate grocery store. And if there is a grocery store, it's one for this, for like three or four neighborhoods. And if you're someone who has to take the bus to go to the grocery store, you're not going to go, you know, you, you're going to go to the most convenient place that you can go to. So I think for those of us who are blessed to be in situations where we can go to, there's like four grocery stores around us, there's a, right. a play fitness around us or whatever. I think it's us who have to get up and advocate that we do pressure our legislators to say, hey, create a policy where we have, you know, these business owners come to the community, they go to the grocery store. Or, you know, if you don't gentrify this area, make sure you create a place for, um, you know, so people can walk around and exercise and things like that. For organizations, give incentives to your, you know, people or create a time where people can have time to walk and do things that are healthy or whatever. But if, you know, if you're someone who's not in that position, you know, your job doesn't afford you the opportunity, don't beat yourself up. Do the best that you can. Um, you know, make small changes. Uh, try, to, try to walk as much as you can maybe instead of, you know, Instead of taking a, you know, you might take the bus to work. Instead of once you get to maybe I'm like a mile or half a mile away from your job, you know, get off the bus and like walk to work. But it's a small thing. So I do think the important thing is that, you know, instead of giving, I come from the, the mind space of if I'm blessed to be in a position where I can do these things, I want to advocate for those who can. So mm -hmm. that's something that I get to those who are in privileged positions. Yes, I love that you mentioned social determinants because we talk about the eight dimensions of wellness, yes. which means your emotional health. If if you feel negative about your body and you're if you don't like being in public and exercise, and then going for a walk around the block would make you very uncomfortable, right? Mm -hmm. That's not something you can do and feel comfortable doing. So it is. I love that you said the small choices, the little decisions that we make all the time you know our tagline is one choice will change your life and so it really is as much about the larger lifestyle changes as it is the little ones as well so thank you for that uh one other thing i want to point out in what you said is also like accountability you talked about uh living in food deserts and people not having access to the same things that other people might have access and how that impacts their ability to make healthy choices how can we hold ourselves accountable as communities, right? We know that communities can vote on what happens in their cities and people aren't necessarily always aware of that. Like there are ways to reach out to the boards of education and sit in the meetings where they decide what the kids will eat for lunch and other things like that. What are some suggestions, suggestions you have for people who are looking for ways to become more active? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm always on the side of like, advocating and pushing your legislators and holding them accountable to do the right thing for the good of the people, right? And that is, you know, ensuring that that health, that people's ability to make good decisions about their health is equitable across the community. I understand that sometimes being an advocate can be daunting and tiring and hard, right? Like, it's yeah. like... It's costing. <laughs> or Angela Rye or Tamika, or, uh, uh, Tamika Mallory or Portia Williams, actually on the front lines, you know, dedicating their lives. And although we commend them and we think that the work that they do is beneficial, we can't always do that, right? But I think the thing is there are, there are always smaller things that we can do. So, you know, here in Louisville, there's a young woman, a young black woman who started a grocery store here in our city. And so I think the thing is, is like, I, you know, I don't live in that part of town, but I can share that information when I do research, you know, with people who I know could benefit from that or, you know, having, I think the thing is like giving resources. Like I may not be able to shop there, but I can send funds to help our organization yeah. or other organizations who do, do, do things like that, like the urban league and things like that. Also like, so giving your money to places um, who do the, who do that work and holding them accountable and making sure that you know that they continue to do that work. Um, I think also when it comes to like accountability, uh, if you're someone who's blessed to be in a position to like, you know, 
achieve good health and things like that. I'm I'm in the I'm in the lane of being kind to yourself, but also if you're talking about like trying to like I don't know lose weight or be better in your health, track what you're doing, you know, and be honest with yourself and be real with yourself. You, you know, you ain't like eating right like you're supposed to. You know, don't beat yourself up, but be like, you know, I ain't doing right. You know, I yeah. really could have just gotten you know this this and that, you know, but like you know, track what you're doing. Um, take pictures of your body. Take pictures of how you look. You know, if you want to look a certain way, you know, see, am I meeting that goal? Make goals for yourself, right? Like, say, if you want to walk every day or run every day, say, I want to walk a mile every day. You know, track like make a plan on how you would do that throughout the week. But if you're someone who's not in that position. Um, I thought I would say, don't beat yourself up, but, like, it's the small things that you do, um, and I think for those of us who are privileged, uh, hold our legislators accountable to make things equitable, support those organizations who say that they're going to do those things, and hold them accountable, right, because, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes we have organizations who say they're going to do one thing, and then they don't, so, you know, hold them accountable. Um, am I answering your question? Answer your question? Yes, <laughs> girl, you know anything you say is golden anyways. Uh, <laughs> I was that like, was perfect. Huh? What'd you I say? Was, I was like, am I just rambling? Because I am nervous, girl. <laughs> no. Now, Kelsey, you know who you talking to. <laughs> There's no be nervous. We'll flip anything around and make it make sense. <laughs> but the last part of what you said was excellent, like holding your leadership accountable, your, your officials, everybody. And I think sometimes people want to be accountable, but they don't necessarily know how to be. You know, like, I want to make sure... Um, my district has what it's what it needs, but I don't really know how to go about that. So that was a good point to actually track not only your behavior, but like see what other people are doing, see other ways that you can help. I love that idea about donating to um, organizations or people who are doing things that aren't necessarily in your area. Like that's a beautiful thing. I know there's a company out in LA or somewhere in California, and they um, use produce they use the produce that doesn't necessarily look as presentable as most people would buy in the grocery store and they still send it out to people and so i was like oh we need to buy this like how long would it take it take it to get here and then i was like oh they don't use ship here well still donate you know (laughs) because it's still a good thing that these things don't go to waste so that's that's keep in mind that's a good tip for people as we wrap up I have one more question because you hit on my leadership, so I won't even force you. But if you do have a thought about this, um, what are some ways that people in leadership can incorporate healthy habits or just mindsets into the company that they run or the organization they work for? What are some ways you could see people trying to start having these conversations? Um, I know you did your research in HIV and AIDS awareness or, or studying it and seeing how different churches are like, trying to acknowledge it. I know that wasn't always easy. I'm <laughs> sure you have some churches that were not necessarily uh, already working from a model or a standpoint where they were aware of it and understood how to address it. How can you have these tough conversations about our health in other places of leadership? Well, so when it comes to like, what's so surprising about like doing research in HIV and focusing on like faith-based institutions, particularly like African-American faith-based institutions is that African-American churches are actually more likely to have an HIV ministry, host an HIV programming, do something around HIV than white churches. And Mm -hmm. and most of the reason behind that is because um, a lot of African-American churches look at it as an issue that is impacting um, a community or the people that are going to their church. And so Mm -hmm. they want to be of service to like addressing that issue um, but there is a variation of, like, how they respond, right? Like, you have some churches who are like, we're going to promote testing, and, and that's it. You know, like, we, y'all. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to do testing. You know, we'll have, we'll do uh, the National Week of Prayer, and we'll pray for folks, folks who are still HIV, and we will, um, you know, talk about testing. But then you do have churches, and quite a few African-American churches who are like, no, let's delve into this conversation. Like, let's talk about condom use. Like, I think it is important for people to understand how to use a condom. You know, we're well, running jokes that I've learned, even with doing this, with churches who decide to do this, is that we look at condoms as grace and no mercy. You know, like, however you view pre- premarital sex, you know, if you're going to... Okay. Condoms can be your grace and your mercy. It can, sa- it can literally save your life and prevent you from 
you know, and I, I, you know, I'm a Christian, so I believe that, you know, we all sin in every day. You know, we're not trying to, but, you know, we, it's, this Christian journey is not easy, and we're not going to get it right all the time. And I don't believe that we should strive to do what's wrong, but, you know, sometimes we mess up. But God gives us grace in our mercy, and I look at conduct as grace and mercy. I look at things like prep as, like, grace and mercy. So, you know, there are a lot of churches who have latched onto the idea of, like, no, let's talk about condoms, let's talk about, you know, uh, Let's talk about sexuality. Let's talk about sex or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think when it comes to organizations in general, taking on a public health approach and them being leaders in like health, I think in public health, one of the, social, one of the we, look, we look at the social ecological model and a part of that model is organization and how you can go within the organizational level and implement like interventions that impact behavior. And I think one thing that organizations can do if you're interested in addressing a particular health issue, is to reach out to your local health department or places within your community that do that work. And they will most likely guide you on what's the best approach on how to do whatever it is you want to do within your organization to do it. Um, you know, and to be honest with you, a lot of people from public health, especially from me, from our, my background, you know, we don't go into organizations trying to tell you, well, you got to do this, right? Like, I don't go into churches saying, well, you got to talk about condom use, you got to talk about sexuality, you know. I don't go in there doing that. I ask them what their level of comfort is. I ask them, you know, what do you feel comfortable talking about? And I... Hello? Can you hear me? Yep, you're back. Okay. I give them advice on what they should do um, based on their comfort level. And a lot of people in public health, come, well, most people from public health come from that mind space. We don't ever, we're not trained to go into an organization and just automatically change it, but we're trained to go on to understand what's your readiness um, this particular health outcome. What's your readiness? So if you're an organization and you want to implement something within your organization that's public health related, reach out to organizations. There's usually, also look into your um, local university. There's usually a person like me or a professor who is there who does this work who wouldn't mind coming in and doing something. Um, but look to, look to your local organizations and your local health They most likely know. Good, good. All right, Kelsey. Now we're going to get personal. One right. question. One choice. I know. Now you can get nervous. <laughs> <laughs> What's one choice you've made lately or in the past, that's really changed your life? Hmm. That's really changed. Any area? I think the, the, the decision to be open, and what I mean by that is the decision to open my mind to different. You know, I grew up very religious, and, um, and I grew up in a thinking that, you know, how I was raised and my train of thinking was the correct way, and I think college through college experiences, through just educational experiences, I've learned to be open and accept mm -hmm. people's differences. I think that that has lended me an opportunity not to understand differences, but to be more compassionate and to be more Christian. Uh, I think I think sometimes, you know, when we think that how we live and how we think and how we believe is the only way, it blocks us from actually being able to see God work in different ways. And I think being open, I think the decision to go into HIV and AIDS was the thing that led me to be open as well. That, you know, God just don't bless those who get it right. You know, God is always is still blessing those who have failed and messed up and those who which society has deemed um, no longer great, no longer good. God is blessing them every day. And honestly, the biggest blessings I ever received, the biggest the, the times in which I think God works the most is in those situations. So I'm, I think the best decision is that I've made in my life that's helped me out a lot is to be open, be open to differences and things like that. So, Absolutely. I love it. I love it. I love it. And that's Bible. That is Bible. <laughs> it is those unique circumstances that <laughs> God uses to change everything. Yes, so I think consistency with that. You're not going to get no different uh, answer from me. Yeah. Kelsey, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for this having me, Sarah. I love seeing your face. I love you know, I love you seeing your talk. face, girl. <laughs> girl, I'm just thrilled. I'm thrilled. Thank you so much for joining us. Any messages that you'd like to share um, with our listeners about their health or just a motivational message that you have to encourage people to keep going and pursuing their health journey? 
Um, for me, I would say to be kind to yourself and love yourself. Um, set goals, but don't beat yourself up if you don't meet them in the time that you, that you thought you should have met them. Don't be afraid to speak your mind. Um, advocate for change and openness. And research coronavirus vaccines. I'm not going to tell nobody or force them to get a vaccine, although I think you should. But, you know, um, because, yeah. But, yeah, research it. It's very important to what's going on today. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all for joining us. You can follow Kelsey. Kelsey, shout out your handle. I believe it's Kelsey Point, uh, or uh, should I say, well, I don't know. Do I say dot? Do I say I zero? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted my, my handle to be Kelsey, and I couldn't do it. So I was like, Kelsey, that's zero. <laughs> Listen, there is, a, there is a white sister, mm -hmm. sister, who has my exact name, oh. and it uses me on the internet. It's just <laughs> very confusing. Girl, she got my whole name. Like first and last four. Oh wait, that Jacri is her middle name too. <laughs> no, thank God her middle initial is different. I said now if she if her middle initial is Jacri, <laughs> now we gotta have a talk, girl, because you're trying to steal my. <laughs> but yes, y'all go follow Kelsey and keep up with the awesome work she's doing. Thank you so much, Kelsey, not only for your willingness to share your knowledge, but also your commitment to service, research, all of the things that you do that are truly impacting our community. We are rooting for you in yeah. your journey. We can't wait to see you arrive at another destination because that's yeah. not your final destination. It's just <laughs> one on the path ahead of you. So thank you so much for joining us today. If you missed the beginning of this, you can catch the replay in our IGTV section on Instagram. Thank you, Kelsey. We wish you the best. Stay safe. For having me. Thank you. Anytime. All right. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.